I am not going to mystify it, but I'm not going to explain it either. I am looking and thinking about the potential for understanding how we move through this so-called post-industrial life and how circumscribed our understanding is. There's something we learn to remember, analyze, and yet the opportunity for assuming control is there as much as the ability to flip on a switch, stretch out an arm. Technology is a very difficult thing to visualize. You, know, you think of what it would be like if you were sitting in Hawaii in, in before Captain Cook got there and all of a sudden for some reason a typewriter dropped on the island and you came out and you looked at this typewriter and you said, huh? And yet, you know, that typewriter is full of information. I mean, you could, by taking that thing apart and putting it back together, you could, you know, eventually sort of figure out what it was. It's just that any technician built into it. Technology presupposes values and value judgments a technology that we're all familiar with and that we can sort of talk about is the automobile. Probably the most major value involved in automobile technology is the sense that we can all use it individually, but it's produced at very specific uh, sites in the country. Um, and when you think about that, it means that we all have use or control over it at a certain point in our lives, but at another point in the actual production of it, we don't. The technology has other values, and those values are things like the use of fossil fuels, which perhaps if we had choices in the development of uh, automobile technology, we would choose some other fuel that doesn't pollute the environment. The, uh, the U.S. farm population is less than 3% of the total population. 5% five percent receive, produce half, and 1% receive two-thirds of all the money that's out there to be had. 1% of the farmer. That leaves every other farmer, that 99% out there scrapping for that one-third. Two years ago, Freddie, our boy, he decided he wanted to stay on the farm, so he added 10 more cows to the herd, and we put in a pipeline, and bigger cooler and everything. It sure is a lot more simpler now and uh, milk cows and a lot easier too. You don't have to carry any milk anymore, you just hang the machine on the cow and it goes into a pipeline and it sucks it right on into the cooler. And we've got a machine where there's a little uh, automatic button on there, when the cow is done it, the button just goes up and you just take the machine off. It isn't supposed to hurt the cows that way. Okay, we've got 160 acres of land, and we've got uh, 26,000 laying ends. And uh, they're in two different buildings. We've got one that's uh, 40 foot wide and 336 feet long. And then we've got a barn that's converted over the downstairs with cages in them. And uh, all the birds are in cages. And we've got automatic feeders and automatic waters. and. Uh, automatic egg belts that bring the eggs to the end of the row. And then all we have to do is pick them off from the tables on the end and pack them into cases. Can technology used on a small scale, such as an individual family or group cooperative, still be effective? Herbert Marcuse said, Technology is a mode of production, as the totality of instruments, devices, and contrivances which characterize the machine age is at the same time a mode of organizing and perpetuating or changing social relationships, a manifestation of prevalent thought and behavior patterns, an instrument for control and domination. Hey Nancy, what you're seeing here are Food Machinery Corporation high density green bean harvesters. Uh, these machines are new last year. Uh, the four that you see working here would replace uh, eight to ten of the old conventional two-row type green bean harvesters. Uh, this design of harvester is the state-of-the-art, the newest uh, type green bean harvesting equipment. The purpose of this machine is that it will take more than two rows, it will harvest more than two rows at one time, and the principal operating parts of the machine are the picking reel in front which strips the green beans from the plant, uh, the fans, the suction fans on the machine which clean the debris, the leaves and stems, extraneous material away from the bean pods, uh, blows the extraneous material out on the side and as you can see in the tanks the green beans are then elevated up into the tanks. 
when the tanks are full, uh, they're raised hydraulically and dumped into either a semi-type truck or a straight truck. Which our agriculture department, which covers quite a large area of the state of Wisconsin, encompasses about 40,000 acres of vegetable crops. These crops are principally contracted with local growers. Uh, it seems there, there's a tremendous inequity, but it just goes to the efficiencies of scales. The larger, you know, the big fish eat, eat bigger fish. It just keeps growing. So for some, somebody that wants to be involved in agriculture on a small basis, they're, uh, they're really foolish. They're absolutely foolish to get involved in it. If they've got any expertise in any other area. So when you think of it, when you think of it in, the, in those terms, uh, you just can't get too excited about agriculture. Marx makes a distinction between um, capital, well, between labor and dead labor. Right? Uh, a human labor is an intrinsically human activity. Right? It's a person doing something to nature. Nothing in nature has value unless it is either noticed by or transformed by human beings. Right, and that process of human consciousness interacting with the environment is in fact labor. Right? You can build a machine that will do the same work as a human being. But that process is dead labor because what, in fact, the labor in there is nothing more than what was created when that product was interacted upon by humans. The basic uh, making of beer itself hasn't changed drastically uh, throughout the years. The uh, equipment that you're using has changed, but the process itself is a biochemical reaction. You're utilizing yeast, and you're at the mercy of uh, an actual biological process. And so that's no real change at all. Uh, however, the, the speed at which you can do it because of advanced machinery and, and things of that nature will help an awful lot. But uh, there is no real change in making a beer over, well, over the centuries, really. I know 21 years ago when I started, we had seven, 179 different brewing companies in this country. And right now we're down into the 30s. Uh, it's, it's really a fascinating thing how some have grown and others have just fallen by the wayside. Uh, some that you would not believe would fall by the wayside because they had tremendous facilities 10, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a wonderful contradiction in, in capitalism. Uh, if you go back and, and, and read Marx, uh, Marx thought that information was free. And so, in fact, did the capitalists at that point think that information was free. In fact, the whole magic trick of capitalism is to take a uh, social process, that is to say people interacting, and to convert it into a plan that is the property of management. Information is a pattern, right? There are three elements in the universe. There's matter, energy, and the way those things were arranged, and the way they are arranged is information, right? The way people are arranged is information, and control of that information is the determination of how the society is going to run. Right. And so the, 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 the right of the manager to say, you will do this, and you will do that, and you will do that, and I will collect the profits, rather than saying, you will sell to you, and you will sell to you, and you will sell to you, the way that I sell to my customers. And you will all take your own profit. The fact that he managed, the managers managed to pull that off was, in fact, control of information. And control of information is the essence of capitalism. Thank you for dialing TRW's 900 number to make the longest long-distance telephone call in history. The Pioneer 10 spacecraft built for NASA by a company called TRW is transmitting these signals to Earth from 2.8 billion miles in space as it begins to leave our solar system. Traveling at the speed of light, this data takes over four hours to reach Earth-bound tracking antennas. Today, we receive the signal as an inaudible impulse at 20 trillionths of a watt. This taped transmission has then been slowed electronically to allow you to recognize the voice of our first spacecraft. Imagine the star. we hooked up to the entire world. Uh, libraries in every country, access to your uh, to the information and the power that your house is using at that point. Um, entertainment, of course. Uh, software for your computer. Um, all of these things could be delivered cheaply and uh, rapidly and absolutely accurately through the cable. There's, there's just nothing else like it in, in, in its ability to carry a very broad band and therefore uh, a lot of information. 
but the question is whether it will be used for that or not <clears throat> and what the expense will be and therefore who will have access to it um, there could very easily be a real stranglehold over all this information and the delivery system itself and mankind I would not say has had a good track record on um, what he does with a product or a service once the stranglehold is there. Um, actually I think the electronic game in industry is very good for the electronic industry overall since most of the games are the most up-to-date in electronic technology. Uh, Integrated circuitry is used extensively in each of the games. The type of people we get in here are basically families and uh, mostly teenagers from the ages of uh, 12 on up to 18 as uh, takes up about 75 percent of our business. So the game industry next is going to uh, holographic games, which is laser games, three-dimensional type of games. Uh, Okay, they've replaced our muscles and now computers replace our minds. We have nothing left but our feelings. And then I see somebody watching TV, right? And they're feeling what this box is doing to them. You know, so what's left? What's left? What hasn't been amputated? What hasn't been technologized? As Mark said, you know, you confront the machine doing everything that you had done. A lot of my life is like watching the Minutemen take off. I turn on the evening news and I say, oh, there they go. You know, I mean, you know, it's feeling of like... This is out of my hands. But the thing is that the, the fact is that all of that stuff that is out of my hands is theoretically being done in my name. Project ELF is an antenna system that the Navy would like to build in northern Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan. It would be used for communications with submarines, and ELF stands for extremely low frequency non-ionizing radiation. This is what would be used for communications with the subs because at such low frequencies, radio waves can penetrate the ocean at greater depths than current communication systems are capable of. The system is vulnerable. What it is is cable strung up on something similar to telephone poles in the National Forest of Wisconsin. And that cable is very vulnerable, not just to any sort of saboteurs, but also to trees falling on it and lightning bolts striking it. All the tools that you have on hand are corrupt. All the tools that you have on hand are um, technologized. Everything that you are wearing is army surplus in one way or another. Everything that you are using is army surplus in one way or another. So you say now, that, all right, so I admit it. I am sitting here in an army surplus depot, and the question is, can I use some of this stuff to, you know, like ET, can I take the speak and spell and put it together with the umbrella? And, you know, and can I somehow, you know, get out of this? The determining factor is not the technology. The determining factor is whether we have the patience and will and uh, hope uh, to be able to use that technology. Vacuum cleaner, toaster, refrigerator, stereo, washing machine, telephone, percolator, lawn mower, microwave, flashlight, typewriter, food processor, air conditioner, waffle iron, hair dryer, garbage disposal.